All right, all right, Red Nation, today we're gonna to talk about what does the growth of the economy, the number of COVID cases have to do with X-ray radiology. How radiology works, we have bite-sized content for those interested in the radiology field. Key is actually exponential behavior. See that the US stock market has grown significantly over time. You'll see there's peaks and valleys, local minima, when you have uh, the housing bubble crashes all along in there, but over time you can see that it's growing. And if you look at the gross domestic product, it's actually smoother than if you just look at the stock market itself. This is the gross domestic product in the US. And if you look at the number of COVID cases in the early days of COVID, this is data from Russia in the early days of COVID, and you can see there's really a very good agreement here between the number of cases and what's called an exponential function. So if something is growing linearly, that means it's gonna grow in direct proportion to the number of days. So the number of cases would be directly related to the number of days. There might be a multiplier, that's essentially the slope of a line. But when something's growing really quickly, as in the case of COVID in the early days, see that essentially every day there was like twice as many cases as the day before, depending on the multiplier, obviously, but the growth is what we call exponential. Talk about the standard example everyone gives you. So imagine you're 20 years old, you want to save some money up, so you take $1, you put your $1 into the stock market, relatively good investment. So imagine every year you're going to make 10% on that $1. So how many dollars do you think you get? Say you want to retire early when you're 60. You start off at age 20 and you want to retire early when you're 60. You put that $1 in, how many dollars do you think you're going to get out? So just think about it for a minute. And as you go through, once you get to be uh, 10 years later, so we start at time zero was when you were 20 years old. Then once you get to be 10 years later, you're now 30 years old. Maybe you met significant someone, you're thinking about getting married. And now you've got $2.7. Number 2.7, you're gonna to wanna to remember that one. But you know, it's a little bit more than you originally had. So that's kind of cool. Because after you started the investment of that $1, now you're at $7. You, you're 40 years old now, you maybe got a kid or two. Maybe you got hitched or maybe you didn't. You just had the kid, you got a significant other and you've got $7 in that account and it's growing over time, nice and reliably. Years in, now you're 50 years old. You're wrestling with some older kids now. They're not quite as little and cute at this point, but you've got $20 now from that initial $1 you put in. And then 60, you'd like to retire. Now you've got $55. You just started with $1, remember? And now that much later, you've got $55. And if you look at the growth, when you went from year zero to year 10, you only grew by $7. But from year 30 to year 40, you grew by close to $30, right? So you can see that the growth is significantly bigger as you get later on and that's what we call compounding effect. This is a public service announcement. You obviously want to start your accounts early for your retirement. Invest in something nice and stable like the stock market. Don't do any cryptocurrency or any of that nonsense where you might get a big up and down all over the case. But put most of your money in something nice and stable and just leave it there. Function looks something like this, right? In that case, we were talking about why was the amount of money we had on that axis, and then the x-axis we were calling t for the amount of time. And it looks something like that. And it's very simple. It's just y, and then we have this number e. That number is actually about 2.7. So y equals e, and then we raise it to a power, and that power is the rate. So in our case, it was 10% or 0.1 would be r, and then t is the time. So it's very simple as far as that relationship. Like we said, E's 2.7 and R is the thing that determines the growth rate or how quickly you're going to be growing. Care about this though. 
obviously if it's on this channel here it must be related to radiology in some way so we put our radiology glasses on and we see what if we took that curve and we actually flipped it down so now we're kind of like playing time backwards if you think about it you were putting your money in here and it was growing 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 in this direction but actually when we talk about x-ray attenuation it's like playing time backwards from our investment example so we start with a given number of x-rays and as those x-rays pass through matter you're actually going to have fewer and fewer and they're going to get attenuated or stop in the matter due to photoelectric effect and Compton scatter and the way that they get attenuated goes like an exponential function. So just exactly the opposite of what we saw in the case of growing your money with compound interest. And the equation is also very simple though. We've just written it, we've changed from time to the distance x and that rate r we change now to something we call mu and that's what we call the attenuation coefficient and when we make an image in ct all we're doing is making a 3d map of that attenuation coefficient so again e is still 2.7 and mu is the thing that determines how quickly the x-rays are going to stop as they pass through the body three attenuation coefficients they actually change from different material and that's what makes our contrast within our images, within our X-ray or CT image, you're actually making an image of that X-ray attenuation coefficient. Soft tissues all are kind of similar in terms of their X-ray attenuation coefficient. And then bone and iodine, they have high Z, so they actually have significantly higher X-ray attenuation coefficient due to the photoelectric effect. You'll also remember that the attenuation part and then the thickness is the other. So if you have a thin patient versus a thick patient, you can see the difference here as far as the number of x-rays come. The bone is going to be more attenuating and is going to occur more brightly. And as well, the soft tissues, especially if you have iodine on board, you're going to need to adjust the window widths and levels that you use in your clinical imaging. In window width and level, we're talking about really how to set the values that we're using in order to display the images and where do those values come from. For that, we have to see our video on house units. Check that one out next.